Our next speaker is here to tell us how driving in the cloud can and should be a high-tech and safe experience. And big data, he says, is just around the corner and ready for your dashboard. Please help me introduce Continental's Automotive's Vice President of Interior Electronics Solutions, Mr. Ralph Leninger. Hello. Hi. Hello. My pleasure. So, good afternoon, um, ladies and gentlemen in the room and special online because I'm really deeply impressed how much people are online following this presentations. And I would like directly have a question to those people online. Those one who is geographical most far away, maybe he can send us the Twitter notes that we can uh, mention this one later on. The Twitter account is ZG. C13. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, the um, theme of my presentation is driving safely through the cloud, the connected vehicle. And here, the important word is safely. Because the automotive industry is an industry where safety counts very much. Everybody who is entering a car at least giving his life into our hands that nothing happened with the car and everything is perfectly working out. So uh, Continental, a well-known tire company, what has Continental to do with the cloud? And here, just for your benefit, meanwhile, Continental is a 170,000 people company with 25,000 engineers, 10,000 of them are doing software. So we are a major stakeholder in the software industry, and so you may understand that we do a lot of projects which may in the future part of the connected world. So to understand us a little more better, and how we would like to bring our company into the future. This slide is showing uh, how and in which areas we are doing the product for the automotive industry. And uh, one example is new values. Everybody knows it's a value set of people, especially if you're looking for the young people, are dramatically changed. Second element is urbanization. More than 50% of the people, meanwhile, are living in mega cities, and a car for a mega city is definitively with other requirements than a car which you have today on highways. Third element is health. Health is a major business um, in the consumer industry and all over the world, and also the requirements for the people to have healthy car are constantly increasing as well. Democratic change, an important issue, keeping in mind in Europe, a typical new car buyer is in the age of 51.3 years and with an increasing tendency on that. The fifth one, and this is what is, what is bringing us here to the CBIT, to you, ladies and gentlemen, is a digital world. And this kind of uh, trend, digital world, generation uh, web 2.0, the internet of everything and always on, is the bridge which is bringing the automotive industry here to the digital IT world. So, what we learn from the IT industry is the cloud is happening. So looking for the numbers, I understood more than 10 billion devices today are connected. Looking for the next years, so 50 billion devices should be interconnected, which making the internet of everything happen. If you see that you have today 700 million cars worldwide on the road, and in the future it will become to 1 billion cars, you may understand that we would like to be, as a new kit on the block, also a part of the internet of everything. So, the uh, question is, if it is so interesting to have internet functionality in the car, to have the connected car happen, why is it not today? And here it comes back, safely driving. If you see the today's HMI interaction, that means you need your fingers, you need your eyes in order to surf into the internet. Unfortunately, you, you need the same fingers and hands and your eyes to drive safely. You see the contradiction. And also, we have meanwhile equipped 24 million cars with our connectivity technology. We need really, unfortunately, to state that even more cars are connected. And this is unfortunately that the people, or a lot of people, surely not you here in the room or online, are using the smartphone while driving, doing texting, or doing uh, surfing, or things like that. 
uh, here you see that it really becomes to a, to a problem. Um, here to share some data, 30% of the accidents in US are root caused by driver distraction. And driver distraction is a major portion is using your smartphone while driving. It's 30%. And just in, to, to, to give you also a feeling on that, if you drive with a speed of 100 kilometers per hour, every second you do 28 meters. And if you look for your smartphone, this represents three to four seconds. If you take the four seconds, if you use your smartphone, that means you do a 100 meter blind flight. And a 100 meter blind flight, this has definitely something to do with the accidents I mentioned before. If you look for the statistic in Germany, on the upper uh, down line, you see how the deathly injured person have come down in Germany to a level of 3,900, which is absolutely fantastic and great. But if you are looking for the overall number of traffic accidents, this is at least not coming down. And if you do a Pareto, why still this number of accidents happen? Of course, we have more cars on the street on one hand, but if you see what are the root cause for that, and you see 90% at least of these accidents happening are, you, are, you, are, are root caused by the human beings, 90%. And here we think to make the cloud happen in the car, to use internet functionality, we need to solve this obstacle, this, this, um, this uh, usability, safe usability in internet of the car. So, what is the overall problem? If you see how a driver is driving in a car, you have at least two extreme positions, safety critical situations. The one is, if the driver is underwhelmed, this is monotony, this is tiredness, at least sleep or microsleep. On the other extreme, you have situations that he is maybe overwhelmed, and that is, for example, use of a smartphone on a car. The most safe situation of the driver if he stays in the middle, and we call the middle the flow. And that means that we need to do counter activity. So if he is tired, if he starts to sleep, we need to bring him with kind of wake up functionality back to track. On the other side, if he is overwhelmed, too busy in the car, we need to slow down the kind of systems that he has enough passion to look uh, just to the street, having the eyes on the street and the hand on the wheel. And this is what we call optimal flow, and that is the target what we are doing, keep him in the flow, and remember, if we can keep him in the flow, then if he is in the flow, then a safe use of internet content is possible. So how we are doing like that, the so driver distraction reduction, and uh, here the, um, the technical setup is to react with the car appropriate to the driver state, you need to know in a closed loop system what is the driver state. And in order to have the driver state, the technology is at least to monitor the face of the driver and his eyes. And based on that, you can do an analysis if he is in the flow or if he is not in the flow. If the second you need is reaction systems, which is the brake systems, automatic brake systems, lane departure warning, ACC systems, and the third is then an interaction from the driver to the car, vice versa. That means the car needs to tell him how critical the situation is which is coming along. So let's do some examples. Um, use case is the driver's eyes are not on the road. And in front, you see a possible collision target, which is the car on the right side of the slide. So number one is, yes, the navigation system is analyzing stra straight, uh, street is going straight, but however, there is maybe some collision risk, uh, and then you can start a kind of warning cascade. So telling the driver very carefully, very smoothly, you are looking to the street, your eyes are not in the street, but be careful, something is coming up, and may better you look to the street. If he's not doing so, step number two in the information cascade is coming along, saying now be a little more careful, just put your eyes to the street, look along, and be careful because something has happened. And what we are doing is a kind of animation in the car that he really gets his eyes, guided eyes, back to the street. Point number three, now it's becoming really critical. 
So collision is not really not so far away. We start a kind of warning procedure. And a warning cascade on that, and really red lights on a complete front is really coming up. And if you come number four, that means the collision is really coming along, and the risk is really high, then we directly activate the safety systems of the car, like automatic braking or lane departure warning on that. So if he is on the road, of course, then if he is see the target uh, in front of him, you don't need to do anything. Uh, second step as well, but in the third step, if it really becomes critical, also here if his eyes on the road, maybe you can start a warning process. And for number point number four, if you come what we call the last point of break, and he is, if he's overrunning the last point of break, then an ultimate warning or an active break intervention take place. So this is absolutely great and absolutely fantastic, but we need easily to accept maybe not everybody is following this warning. May the people stay in using their smartphone, stay looking back to their kids on the back and really ignoring on that. So, and this is for us a message that we have said we need easily to accept that there will be a risk that the people are not reacting on that. And the question is, what is the solution if it comes like that? And our answer is automatic driving. You Surely read in the newspaper, this is, I would say, one hype or a mega hype within the complete automotive industry. We put a lot of efforts, a lot of R&D efforts in to make automated driving happen. So what is automated driving? At least automated driving is a system integration that you take a lot of available information, put them together to a driving strategy and based on the striving strategy, you are generating the respective behavior of the car. So automated driving will not come up in 2000, uh, 2000 or tomorrow in a complete manner. We see a step-by-step -step approach. So 2016, we see automated driving in a particularly automated uh, uh, mode. This is, for example, on low speed on highways. So we have in mind now to go to mass production 2016 for such a system that in speed between 0 and 30 kilometers, such a car is driving by his own. The so next step will be around 2020, which is called highly automated driving. That means the automated function is coming along, and there is an, an, a time accepted where the driver is not in the loop, that he is doing something else, but this time needs to be limited to a couple of seconds. And 2025, so we really see the fully automated driving car uh, coming, coming really to the streets on that. So, and now coming back to CBIT, and now the link is coming along. To make this function automated driving happen, you need to have three things and understand three things. The first is the driver. So is he sleeping? If he is attention, if he's looking for television, what is the time to bring him back in, urgent, in urgency situation to a responsibility? So we need to understand the driver and have the sensors in place. The second is the system as a car like that. So we need to have the ability to control the system in a very safe manner, because if we leave the responsibility to the car, then the car needs to react properly. And the third and biggest wheel here is information. Here, the background is if you look for a car, the eyes of the car are called radar systems. And the radar systems have a reach of two to 300 meters, not more. And this is very similar if you drive your car and flap down your, 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 your sun element, and then you see two, 300 meters. And this is not good to drive the car. So we need to learn more what's going on the street behind the two, 300 meter. And this is at least the cloud. The cloud needs to tell us what, what is behind the two, 300 meters, how is the street running, and all navigation data doesn't help so much. So we need actual, real-time data out of the cloud, what is going on in the street. And this is a very strong lead and a very strong support we need from the cloud, from the whole IT world, in order to have this kind of data available to make the automated driving happen, vice versa. If we have the car running around, I think we can have some interesting data which we can share also with the IT community and take respective benefits out on that. So um, once again, four elements to make automated car happen. It's the car, 
It's other cars as a sensors. It's a car-to-car -car communication because other cars can also tell me what's going on the street I'm driving along. The third is back-end and database. Wherever the data are coming from, real-time data, which helps me to know what is the real situation of the street. And the fourth is other data sources, if it is maps or whatever data it is. So, and this is one example how the automotive industry and the IT industry, in order to merge together, to make new cases happen, like automated driving, because without the IT industry, automated driving will not take place. Vice versa, with an auto automated car, also automated driving will not take place as well. And here, we go very strongly the way to look for respective alliances and cooperation within the IE, IT industry, within the respective use cases, in order to get your support, in order to make this thing happen. And learning a lot, it's not only automated driving, because if you have the system set up, we see a lot of other industry arenas which have highest interest in order to get the data out of the car. And if you look for insurance industry, like the uh, pay-as-you-drive principle of the insurance systems, if you are looking for trading, a lot of trade companies are highly interested to know where the people are, what cage stage they are, and maybe they can do special kind of offerings on that. Energy industry is highly interested as well, especially if you look electrification of the car, or transportation company um, as well, and the whole telecommunication area where we have the representatives online as well as here in the room. So, gentlemen, this was just a short summary, how we are thinking, what we are looking, why we are looking very strongly uh, to the connected car on an example of one special use case is the automated, the automated driving and sharing with you also the HMI thing, eyes on the road, hand on the wheel and internet and to make a system happen which is allowing using the digital world by safe driving. This is our agenda and whoever is interested to get in contact with us and has discussions and can contribute to this is more than highly welcome. So ladies and gentlemen, online in the room, um, thank you very much for your attention. Hopefully we, I could give you a short overview of what our thoughts are. Thank you very much.